Oh, Today is days. July 20th, 2017. Uh, it's about 2, 10 p.m. Uh, this is Keith. <laughs> Would you like to introduce yourself? Oh, I'm Keith. Uh, I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> yep. Okay. As you can tell. Yes. So, but... tell me about what, how many weeks it's been since your last um, um, recovery. Sober period? Yeah. So, like three weeks almost. It's coming up to three weeks. So, quite a while. Um... And uh, you were just asking me about like what it's like, what makes me drink, even though I have like severe withdrawals after quitting. Um, and it's weird because I'll walk through the house, and as soon as I see like either mom or dad with like a beer or a glass of wine, I'll, my mind automatically thinks like, okay, there's a bottle of wine somewhere around this house, and they're hiding it. Where the fuck would they put it? Okay, and then I'll think like that, and I'm like, okay. Well, fuck okay the craving will last about like five minutes i'll calm myself down but then i always have that in the back of my mind where it's like where is that bottle of wine i know that mom's not gonna drink it all and i know i'm gonna find it later tonight and then when they go to bed i'm just like okay where is it and i'll search everywhere like every spot that i can think of sometimes i'll just be lucky and i'm like i'll just Fucking, I don't even know if it's like Here, part I'll of my mind that sniffs it out, but I'll like, like last I'll night for example, so nice. I was, um, so nice. I was going through that period where like I didn't have like a, a beer next to me and like that starts to scare the shit out of me because like I'm facing withdrawals at this point, so I need something like, and uh, I was like, I started my search and it's fucking crazy I know like I'll just literally walk everywhere throughout the house like at night like creeping and crawling like doing like a like a cokehead like when you're looking for when you're looking yeah. for drugs yeah but it's like alcohol is easier to find so that's great <laughs> yeah at least you're not searching through the vents <laughs> yeah. but yeah no so I was like I this is like how old this beer was that I found like an empty or full beer it was like right on the shelf in there like and uh, I guess dad had put it there like a long time ago and forgot about, about it. It. Yeah. it was so old that there was even mold on the top of it. And I was like, fuck it. And I just cleaned it off and I just cracked it open. And I just, that was my night. Wow. And, like, and it was yeah. just the one beer that kind of fought, fought off the next <clears throat> few hours. And... Yeah, I fought, off, fought it off for about like six hours. And then, and then it was like right back to it. And I'm like, Jesus. Oh. And I'm like sitting there trying to hydrate at the same time. And it's like, fuck. Brutal. It just doesn't work for you. There's no, no like, there's no I one think, night of drinking and then just recovering the next no, day anymore. It, it has to be complete abstinence if I want to get clean because like if I have just one sip or like even nowhere like because if I have one beer I know there's probably five sitting around somewhere and then I'll count the empties and uh, I'll be like okay well there's three empties that means I've had one there's two left. If I'm lucky. And then I'll go searching. Right. <laughs> it's fucked. So it's all this... It's, like, it's become like a lifestyle for you. It's... Yeah, no, it's a devastating lifestyle, so... I wouldn't fucking wish it upon anyone, because I'm slowly killing myself, and I know it. And then I really want to stop, but it's like... I live in... Uh, I think, of it like, like I was saying before, like a product of my own environment. Like, um... I can't live in a house where there's alcohol around... Because no. eventually the cravings will come and I can fight them off for like a week, maybe two weeks. Uh, I think I made it 41 days and that's the longest clean time I've had in my entire life since I was 12. Yeah. And then it just, it's like a constant battle. And I don't know, at least I'm trying. I'm not like... For you, the detox a, didn't work though. When you went three I've weeks done ago, detox three times now. I've done treatment uh, once. Treatment once. How uh, many times were you hospitalized in the last three months? You probably went about six times, right? No, not that many, but possibly. I don't know. If I if I did, I have no recollection. You don't remember that time when I took you up to the hospital <clears throat> and? I remember. I remember that. That was after. What about the we, taxi driver? Yeah. Yeah, I remember the taxi that one driver too. and dad taking you up. Yeah, and then a time, yeah, dad took me up. And then Aunt Marion and Uncle Alan. Yeah, that was in the past six months. So, over the course of six months, probably about six times. Okay. Easily. Wow. Yeah. And 
I've literally have, like. Have they ever mentioned the fact that you had a seizure, or is that even on your file? Like, um, I'm not sure if it's on my file, but I always tell them when I go in. I'm like, look, I've had a seizure in the past because of this. Like, yeah, you no, know, take me seriously, and then and they the never last, do. Well, the last time I did, I did go there. They just the doctor kicked me out without giving me a prescription for anything. So what? What was I supposed to do? I was like, well, you better get me a fucking cab and make <laughs> pay for it. <laughs> otherwise, that, yeah. I'm just gonna drive home. You don't want that. And so the nurse was like, she was under, she was understanding. I think she went to the doctor about a couple times, two well, or three yeah. times. But um, it was because I think the previous time, this is probably why they kicked me out. The previous time, I was in there and they actually had me hooked up to an IV, and then like something in my mind was like, I sort of like came out of like. I don't know I guess like a passed out stage and I just ripped the IVs out and I walked home this is like right before I went into Creekside for my third detox okay I remember yeah. you telling me this yeah. yeah and then I walked home and I walked through the back 40 and I literally stepped on a branch and had like a fucking one inch piece of wood stuck in my foot and I was Jesus. so so out of it and so drunk that, that you I didn't, didn't even, even know that I didn't even care it wasn't that I didn't know. I knew there was fucking something wrong with my foot, but for like two days I was limping around. Dad thought I would sprained my ankle or something, but I was just in such a haze. And it's like I know exactly. Like right now I'm like, I don't know, a few beers deep, and that's why I'm like able to sustain like a conversation. But if you talked to me earlier, I'd probably be like, let me just watch a movie. <laughs> Fuck. That is fucked. Yeah, <clears throat> I don't know. So many other things about addiction that I I could tell you, but like, um, if you're witnessing it. No, I see it. Well, my baby just woke up, so that's the end of that. But thank you for sharing part of that. <clears throat> Who the hell are you gonna share this <laughs> with? Nobody. This is for my own personal keeping. Yeah, right. Okay, say bye bye. <laughs>